Hello and welcome to the first edition of a new, not a new vlog because I'm still on the same YouTube channel, but a new strand of the vlogs that I'm going to be doing called Book Club. What I initially intended to do when I first started out with this vlog is try and use it as a mechanism to feed some really, really interesting information back into the community of practitioners that were involved in addressing issues relating to inequality in education and widening access to, to higher education. My first thought of what I wanted to do was get in touch with people and hopefully do a few kind of co-produced vlogs that would be able to provide their expertise in these videos as well. However, as I'm not um, a media mogul and I don't have uh, the BBC behind me to get people's interest in doing vlogs with me, then it became a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. So instead what I've decided to do is start book club. What I intend to do from now on is introduce different books that I've found really, really interesting during my time um, doing my PhD research in education and have a little bit of a talk about the main themes and why I would definitely recommend, if you've got the time, giving them a read yourself. If not, then hopefully the, the short videos will give you a bit of an insight into the debates that are going on around widening access to higher education, addressing issues relating to inequality and social mobility, etc, etc. So, without further ado, the first book that I'm looking to review for Book Club is um, Social Mobility and Its Enemies by Lee Elliott Major and a gentleman called Stephen Machin. Now, Lee Elliott Major is CEO of a charity called the Sun Trust, which do an awful lot of research in issues relating to kind of inequality and education and produce reports and recommendations about what we can do to start uh, tackling these issues. If you haven't heard of the Sun Trust before, really good organisation, maybe check them out. What I'll do actually in the description below is I'll put a link to their website and some of their kind of research publications so you can take a look if you want to. The second author, the co-author, is Stephen Matchin. Stephen Matchin is a professor of economics at London School of Economics and these two working together writing a book works really really well because a lot of what they talk about is backed up by strong studies from really reputable sources outlining what they say. Essentially the books split into three different areas. The first one takes a look at why a lack of social mobility and inequality is an issue and then sets out to provide a context of the UK's position within a much wider international conversation because social immobility is something that is seen as harmful to all societies not just the UK or America. Um, high levels of social mobility are usually associated with greater levels of equality. The second part of the book looks at social mobility and education and examines the structural mechanisms that are kind of inbuilt into the fabric of our society which makes social mobility very very difficult. The third section looks at ways in which we can start to tackle this and things that we could do uh, together as a society to start addressing some of the problems that are caused by social immobility and a growing gulf in between those who have the most and those who have least. The first section really is about describing and explaining how that gulf looks at the moment. So essentially what they provide evidence to argue is that in the last 50 years the gap between those who have the most and those who have the least has grown quite significantly. Alongside that they also argue that essentially people are becoming more stuck to the bottom and more stuck to the top. So for a healthy society to operate there needs to be a constant move up and down of social mobility in order to keep the distribution in such a way that generally speaking everybody has as close to equal amounts as possible. When more people get stuck at the top or more people get stuck at the bottom that gulf widens and people get stuck in the same position where there will be at the bottom multiple generations of people experiencing inequality, poverty, lack of access to education and a multitude of resources that we would equate with having a happy healthy life and obviously um, they articulate that that's not a healthy situation for society to be in. England in an international intergenerational social mobility league table they say came out second bottom. The only country that was worse than us for social mobility was America and most other countries were doing significantly better at creating mechanisms whereby social mobility could occur 
than England it was spread differently across different geographic regions so it argued if you lived in London you were a lot more likely to become socially mobile than say if you lived in Norfolk or in Blackpool or areas of the West Midlands this had serious ramifications because this doesn't just affect one generation of people it affects multiple generations and the longer that it goes on the deeper it becomes entrenched and the more difficult it is for people to become unstuck within part two it really started to examine some of the reasons for this specifically with regard to education however something that it was very keen on saying was that education cannot solve all the problems by itself these are big structural problems that yes education can play a part in tackling but at best really it can act as a counterbalance to negate some of the harm that's going on or if, as the book argues, through um, practices that have been appropriated by the middle class in an educational arms race, education can actually act as a tool to further entrench this immobility and further embed these inequalities which are plaguing people's life chances in society. Now I'm not going to go into detail about all of the mechanisms they demonstrate by which the middle classes basically game the system to ensure that the privilege, the, the resources that they've got access to are protected through the next generation. Um, you can do that yourself reading the book if you want, but safe to say there is loads from gaming catchment areas to extra tutoring to knowing how university admissions policies work and loads, loads more besides. And all of these are harmful if we want to create a fairer, more equal, more inclusive education system and society more generally. What it also pointed out is that the inequality experienced, even if a working class student or a student from a working class background had navigated all of these different barriers and mechanisms that I just spoke about, then if they graduated into a professional managerial job, the fact that they have working class parents perhaps involved in kind of manual jobs as opposed to middle class parents involved in professional jobs means that on average they are likely to earn around £6,000 less per year purely because of the fact that they have working class parents rather than middle class parents. So even if they become socially mobile and enter into those professions, they are still at a disadvantage purely because of where they come from and their background, which is massively, massively unfair. And Lee Elliott Major and Professor Stephen Machin really drill down into the detail about the possible consequences that can have for the health of a society in general and our future. However, it's not all doom and gloom within the book. Something that they examine when it gets on to the third and final part is things that we can do about it. Ways in which society can change or the structures of education and the mechanisms can change to level the playing field and ensure that we are no longer the second worst in the world for the chances of somebody from a working class background getting a job as a doctor or a barrister or a solicitor or a university academic when they're older. One of the key changes that they argue needs to be made is the way that we achieve social mobility. At the moment we've got a model that only concentrates on the academic as a talent worth developing. What if we are to move towards a system of social mobility that is fairer and more inclusive and more effective, what they argue is we need to be better at recognising talent, better at recognising talents um, in the creative subjects, so things like arts and drama, music. And we need to be also be better at creating valuable, credible vocational mechanisms for students who don't want to go to university for three years to access a profession that can provide a rewarding career. At the present, we don't have a system where that's, that's achieved. You know, soft skills, the clues in the title, they are seen as less valuable than the hard skills, you know, the maths, the sciences, the STEM subjects that we're always pushing. If we are to redress the balance in society and start to work towards something that looks fairer, more equal, more inclusive, Major and Machin both argue that that needs to change significantly and we need to create an education system and a society more generally that recognises the values of those 
creative subjects, those soft skills, those vocational routes in order to make a significant impact and change. Interestingly, at no stage in the book did the idea of students' attitudes or a lack of aspiration enter into the conversation about the reason why there was such significant levels of inequality in society. What Machin and Major point the figure out is structural mechanisms that are holding students back, that are limiting chances and creating massive barriers to students to be able to achieve a type of life or future that they may want to achieve, something which for them would constitute a good life. So they argue it's not about an individual and whether they hope enough that they can become a doctor. Instead, they say what we need to work towards essentially is levelling the playing field and changing the rules of the game in some instances to ensure that everybody gets a fair crack of the whip. What the book says with regards to those structural mechanisms is, is quite clear. I'll read you out a quick passage. We need to confront the enemies of social mobility, the school admissions cheats and opportunity hoarders the bad employers and socially selective schools, the detached elites and the ills of poor parenting and extreme inequality. For the authors of Social Mobility and Its Enemies, it's those things that you need to fix in order to create a fairer and more equal society, not getting students to, to hope that they're going to be a doctor a little bit more than they do already. So it is, like I've mentioned in a previous blog, about creating an environment in which students can develop expectations to be whatever it is that they choose to be um, for their future career in an adult life. So, in conclusion, I would highly recommend giving social mobility and its enemy a read. It's a fairly short read, it, it took me a few hours to get through it and it only cost me about six quid on Amazon. So it's not expensive and it provides a really succinct, comprehensive overview of the state of play with social mobility in the UK at the moment and more importantly, the areas that we need to work together to start addressing if we're going to make a real difference. If you've enjoyed this book review, I'm hoping that I'm going to do an awful lot more, so please click like and subscribe so you can get updates for when I post new stuff. And if you've got any recommendations for books that you'd like me to review in future that you think would be really useful for outreach practitioners or teachers in schools to know about, then please drop them in the comment section below. That's it from me for this time, and I'll see you next week.